What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here and today I'm going to be bringing you a D-Brigade deckless profile. Now, I did have an EX3 D-Brigade deckless profile already up, but that used a lot of the new EX3 cores um, with the Tank Jermon and the new Dark Jermon and stuff like that. This list is going to be much more focused around kind of the older style of D-Brigade prior to EX3 where you would just play a lot of rookies, you would have that Dark Jermon endgame, and you would have some pretty strong security options to be able to kind of give you some defense and security while you play that aggression. Now, I have been sick for pretty much the past two weeks, which is why I haven't been uploading too much, but I have been able to work on quite a few decks, and so I will be bringing those lists to you, with the first one being this D-Brigade list, so um, I am pretty happy with this list so far. I think it does pretty well in the current metagame, and I think it will do pretty well into the bt11 metagame as well so with that being said let's go ahead and get on into the deck all right so to start off we are going with the digitama we are going to have four missimon from ex3 and then the one pogumon from bt6 missimon is just way stronger being able to give you that reboot ability so now whenever you swing in with your command Jermon or your seal Jermon, you will be able to have reboot if you have another d brigade on the board and since we are playing command Jermons that have 5k dp or playing uh, jamming seal Jermon, we want that restand effect now pogumon is very strong pogumon was used in all the previous d brigade lists because of the search that it gave you but you can whiff and in this list you can whiff it a little bit harder than you would in a lot of other lists because of the options and the tamers and so i think you do want the fifth egg just so that way you can have as much aggression as possible coming out of uh, raising so go in with the pokemon but missimon with the reboot is much much stronger now next up of course we are going to be having the rookies and we have quite a lot of them so starting off with the commandermon we are going to be having a fairly standard lineup of four of the bt4 commandermon this one being able to have on deletion play another commandermon is very big then we're going to be having the two drop commandermon which is kind of your board flutter being able to just play it for very cheap and be able to go wide this is kind of your good turn one play be able to put this in raising put this out put your opponent at two and then have two swings next turn then we have the 5k Commandermon, just our beat stick, really good with the reboot Missimon, again, because you can swing in, and then if it survives, you reboot, allowing you to be able to more, or have a higher chance of being able to swing again next turn, so the 5k Commandermon, very good. Then we'll have the 4 Blocker Commandermon, because Blocker is very good. I do think this is one of the weaker Commandermons, because it is just 4 cost for 2k, but Blocker is very good when you are able to play this out for free um, from the BT4 Commandermon, or you just play this out of raising. It is very crucial, and um, since I'm not playing the Blocker Seal Jermon, having the Max Blocker is very good for metagames like this. And then to finish it off, we will be having three of the new EX3 Commandermon with Decoy, and I'm only playing three because... Um, we do have more rookies to go through, so we already have a pretty high rookie count, and honestly, the decoy isn't as important. It doesn't come up as much, but it still is a Commandermon name. It still bumps our Commandermon count up to 19. You could play the full 20, but like I said, um, building the list, I did end up cutting this down to three just to add in more rookies, which we'll go over right now. Now moving on to the rest of our rookies, we have three of the Hagurumon from EX1 on play. You get to trash a cyborg and be able to draw two, which is all of our D-Brigade cards, and so this gets you D brigades into trash for your Dark Jermons while also being able to cycle. Hagurumon is super key into this deck. Um, it's been used since Hagurumon came out and it will continue to be used because of how well it fits into this deck. So playing it at three. And then to finish off the rookies, we have two Chumon as our memory blockers. And I just think memory blocking is very strong right now. I wanted I wasn't playing Chumon at all. I was actually playing the fourth uh decoy commander one and the fourth hagurumon and end up cutting one and one for the chumons because it is just very strong right now with decks like bloom lordmon being able to gain memory every deck playing memory boosts uh metal gururumon having things like hammer spark and things like that there's just so much memory to stop that chumon felt completely necessary to play you could also fit chikurimon in from the new starter decks in here as well as a floodgate but um i don't think you need it as much the decks where chikurimon is good um, I think D-Brigade does well as to where Chumon just is much more universal versus most of the metagames. So, um, yeah, just finishing off the rookies with a Chumon, very good. Next up, moving on into the champions, we have three Seals Jermon from EX3, and this is just because it has jamming, and you can pair this with the reboot inheritable that we get from the Missimon Digitama, so you'll be able to swing jamming, reboot, unsuspend, and then basically just keep that aggression going. I didn't think the combo of that would be as powerful, but once testing it, being able to reboot your jamming Seals Jermon is 
it makes your opponent have to remove it, which means that a lot of times they either have to make weird plays and use option cards, or they have to maybe promote when they wouldn't want to promote, which would then leave them open to our removal cards. And so really like Sealdramon, I was playing it at two and ended up bumping up to three just because I felt like I wasn't seeing it that much. And also just being able to digivolve something like, let's say you have the Chumon out and Chumon isn't very good in the current matchup that you're playing because they don't gain memory well then you can just put sealsdramon on top of it start swinging jamming or maybe you play out hagurumon to get that draw and then you can put sealsdramon on top of it to get jamming um it's just worked out very very well so i do really like the sealsdramon and then we're also playing two grumblemon to finish off the champions this is kind of just our finisher we have the five tamers and so we do have decent spots for it i played it at two just the higher consistency when you're playing it at one, there's a lot of times it'll be at the bottom of your deck or in your security and you won't see it. And so by playing it at two, you have a higher chance of hitting it. So you can actually go for your hybrid for end game. Moving on into the three Dark Dramon from BT4. And this is pretty staple. I always play three Dark Dramon, the Rush Dark Dramon, just because four is very clunky. And I don't think you need four, especially because you can, in later matchups, you'll just be able to recycle Dark Dramons with Dark Dramons and have an infinite Dark Dramon cycle. So you don't really need four. And Durf versus faster matchups you really only play one per game anyway and so having four just means you have more cards in your hand that can clunk that you'll have to pitch off a gurumon which you'd rather have some more consistency cards in there so just playing the three dark Dramon, and then to finish off the digimon we will have two death xmon not too much to say about this this card is just very strong in the metagame um decks like bloom lordmon and jessmon i think make this card mandatory in this deck and so just playing it at two i don't think you can really fit more you could play three but i also think that if you did put in three it might be a little bricky just because you don't always get death out death x out with this deck because you can be so aggressive that you win the game before death x is even really playable at all but there are a lot of matchups where your opponent just goes so wide so quick that you need death x or you will just get shut out now getting on into the tamers it is going to be fairly standard with three kazu and two izzy kazu very strong because most of our cards are cyborg so we will be able to gain a memory at the start of our turn which just lets us expend our plays a little bit more and then also when attacking with with one of our cyborgs we can suspend this to be able to draw a card and trash a card which allows us to get cycle and also allows us to get our d brigades into our trash and then izzy i just feel like is kind of necessary you really need a memory tamer in this list because of the dark Dramon. you need three memory to play out this dark Dramon and get the rush and so if you don't play memory tamer it's much easier for you to get choked and you'll never be able to play that finisher and you're gonna have to worry or hope on things like grumblemon and being able to gain memory from kazu as to where if you have the izzy you just will have three and so um, izzy is also very nice because it is in a way a three cost memory tamer because if you reveal all three uh, black cards with the effect you do get to gain a memory so it is um, just very nice it can come out of security and it can gain you memory and past turn that's only happened to me once so it's not the biggest thing that can uh, happen but it is possible all right now to move on into the last part of the list which is going to be our options we will start off with our big removal cards which is going to be three iron fist onslaught two ultimate flare and one quake blast fire father now i was playing a three three split between um, the Ultimate Flare and the Iron Fisted Onslaught. And honestly, Ultimate Flare really felt kind of weak. And so I was considering just playing the fourth Iron Fisted Onslaught. When I was looking into more option cards, I did see the, uh, the Quake Blast. This is a card that I haven't used really at all before putting it in this deck, but I found it as you are gonna be able to delete most big stacks, which is um, what Iron Fisted Onslaught is gonna be able to do, but it is a seven cost and that actually came up pretty big having the ability to play something for seven instead of eight is shouldn't seem like that big of a deal but the difference between putting your opponent to four and five can mean so much in a lot of matchups so i was mostly testing this card i haven't had a problem with it it has been pretty good but if you find that you aren't enjoying uh this card you could easily put it in for third ultimate floor or fourth Ult iron fisted onslaught but um i do like this lineup of removal because it gives you a very consistent chance of having like two one or two removal cards in security and those come up pretty big and it also make sure you have one in hand for whenever your opponent uh, maybe swings and security doesn't hit something you need to clear it or maybe they go wide so you need to go ultimate flare um, they just have a big stack so you quake blast whatever you need to do um, i just really like this lineup but again if you don't like this card you can swap it out for really whatever you want next up we are going to have the three pride memory boost i think there's not too much to really say here pride is just a memory boost that essentially allows us to play out a commandermon or a gurumon or a chumon for free which is very big because 
we play this out, we get another body on board, which can then attack later, and then we have the delay to gain two memory, which means that you can then um, go for the Grumble Mon if you need it to gain that two memory. You can play an A-cost option and not put your opponent as much memory, whatever you need to do. Pride Memory Boost is very strong. And then to finish off the list, I am playing two Congo, and if I'm gonna be honest, this is the card that I am the least confident in in the list it is a card that is very strong it has matchups where it can be very good um, but it also has matchups where it can be completely useless and doesn't do too much for you the main reason why I did still like having it in here is because as somebody who's played a lot of security control um, I know that the D Brigade matchup isn't super great unless you're playing multiple Kongu if you're playing multiple Kongu it's much easier for you to win the Setcon mirror uh, the second matchup I guess and so um, I was kind of teching for that, but I think you could cut play the one Kongu and cut this for really anything that you wanted if you want, but um, I haven't found anything that I found to really fit in that slot, so I still have been playing the second Kongu, but um, just being honest, this, is, this one card right here is the thing that I'm the least confident in. I don't know exactly what I'd put it in, but um, Kongu has been powerful, but if you have something else that you'd want to play, you could really put it in for just about anything, but... That is going to be the D Brigade list. Again, it is much similar to the older style of D Brigade, just kind of um, more teched for the current metagame than it was with the last metagame where we played a lot more things like the BT6 Jakurimon and stuff like that. So if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you enjoyed about the list, what you didn't like about the list, what you would change. Uh, just let me know down below. And as I am slowly starting to get over this sickness, I will be uploading more content. Um, now that I can finally speak, I wasn't able to speak for the past week or so, so, but we are finally back and I'm excited to be back making some content. So we will be back soon with some more lists and battle content and all that. So I'll catch you next time. Peace out.